Let me show you how easy it is to make banana pudding from scratch using real ingredients. And as a bonus, the vanilla wafers are gluten-free. You're welcome. Ideally, you want to make this banana pudding the day before you wanna serve it. And that is because you want it to sit in the fridge and chill and let all of those components just kind of meld together and get really, really, really yummy. There are four components to homemade banana pudding. You have your vanilla pudding, you have your vanilla wafers, you have whipped cream, and of course, you have bananas. Let's go over them one by one. The very first thing you need to do is get your pudding cooked. And that's because you're gonna wanna let it cool down in the fridge so that it's nice and cool when you go to assemble everything. So place the sugar, your tapioca starch and salt in a saucepan and whisk it to combine. Pour in two cups of milk and whisk everything together to make sure there are no clumps. Heat over medium heat, whisking constantly until the mixture starts to thicken. This will take about 10 minutes. Once you see it thicken, set a timer for one minute. Place two egg yolks in a large bowl and pour half of the mixture into the yolks whisking constantly to temper the eggs. This is what's gonna keep those egg yolks from getting scrambled. Pour that mixture back into the saucepan and whisk it over medium heat for one more minute. Remove the saucepan from the heat and stir in two tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Pour the pudding into a bowl, allow it to cool down a little bit, and then you're gonna place a piece of cling wrap on top of the surface of the pudding. Just use your hands to press it down so that it touches, and this will keep it from getting a skin on the top of the pudding. Place the pudding in the fridge to chill while you make the rest of the ingredients. All right, here's the exciting part, the gluten-free Nilla wafers. You guys, they taste so good. And I mean, you won't be able to tell the difference, I promise you, from a regular vanilla wafer that you get in one of those boxes. In a mixing bowl, combine the almond flour, the tapioca starch, sugar, salt, cream of tartar, and baking soda. Give that a good stir to combine everything. And then you're going to add four teaspoons of vanilla extract, these are vanilla wafers, so we want a really strong vanilla flavor, okay? Four tablespoons of melted butter and one egg, and just mix it all to combine. Place the dough in the fridge to chill for at least 30 minutes, and that's going to firm this dough up, which is gonna make it way easier to form into the cookies when we go to bake them. Once your dough has had a chance to firm up, it's time to shape them and get them on the baking sheet. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 325 degrees, and then you will need two baking sheets if you wanna bake these all at one time, uh, and put some parchment paper down on top of them. I like to use a cookie scoop. You can even use a tablespoon measuring spoon, but you want to take a tablespoon of the cookie dough, and then you're going to put that onto, you know, a work surface or onto your baking sheet, and then you're gonna take a knife and you're gonna cut it in half. And that'll give you one and a half teaspoon portions, which is the size that you want so that it's as close to a Nilla wafer as possible. Once you have those cut in half, just take a piece and roll it around in your hand to form a little ball. And then you're gonna to wanna to slightly press down on it so that it's more of a disc shape. Once you have them all shaped, go ahead and put them in the oven for 20 minutes. And if you don't have a convection oven, it's a good idea to turn the trays halfway through baking. Once they're done, just go ahead and transfer them to a cooling rack so that they can cool completely. Let me tell you, these babies are delicious. Mmm. Okay, you guys. We don't want some regular old banana pudding. 
we are going through the trouble of making this from scratch, so we wanna put this banana pudding over the top. Am I right? We are gonna make a whipped cream that's going to get folded into that vanilla pudding before we go to assemble it. In a bowl, you're going to beat one cup of heavy cream with a half teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that cream of tartar just helps to stabilize that whipped cream and make it nice and thick. Beat that until there are stiff peaks. In a separate bowl, you're going to beat a block of cream cheese. Make sure it's at room temperature because that's a lot easier to get to a smooth consistency that way. Add a quarter cup of extra fine sugar, or you can use powdered sugar if you like, to the cream cheese and just blend that till it's nice and smooth. And then you're going to pour the cream cheese into the whipped cream and continue to beat those two together until they're just combined. You don't wanna overbeat it. You're just trying to get those mixed together. And then you're gonna pop that straight into the fridge and let it chill until you're ready to assemble. All right, you guys, all that's left to do is put this baby together. Now it's time to take your vanilla pudding and fold it into the whipped cream mixture. One thing to note, make sure that pudding is completely cool, even maybe a little bit chilled before you start to mix the pudding and the whipped cream together. Just pour it right in and use a spatula to gently fold that together. It doesn't really matter if you see streaks of the whipped cream throughout the pudding, that's fine. You'll need a nine by 13 inch baking dish. And all you need to do is put a layer of your vanilla wafers, a layer of bananas, and then a layer of your pudding cr uh, whipped cream mixture, and just keep layering those until you're out of the ingredients. And then you're gonna wanna take a piece of cling wrap and just cover that dish up stick it in the fridge for a few hours and let it just get all melded and yummy and delicious. And that's it. That's how you make the best, the most amazing banana pudding that's also gluten-free. Go ahead and give it a try and let me know what you think.